So here, it's recorded. A little bit so, like real life, isn't it, Pierre? A little yeah. messy? Right? Yeah, I like it. Yeah, really, really honestly, I like when it's not completely perfect. This is, so it's quite good. So I have here desktop one, desktop two. Okay, let's share this one. So let's make it this way. So you should see my screen. Am I right? Good. So go. Um, 12 step, okay, I, I agree, that's a lot. Because when I try to discover, okay, the idea is, okay, we want to go agile, we want to have, we want to design a, a, an organization in a certain way, or we want to go the same, we want to have a digital organization. And, and since the last 12 years, I, deserve, I work in a couple of the, those companies, and I can see some patterns coming out. And, and, and a couple of who follow the training with me, so the training on Azure coaching is really, really focused on designing organization. And the idea is uh, Agile is the behavior of people in a system that we call Agile. It has nothing to do with the methodology, has nothing to do with something else. It's how we interact together as a team or as a, a bundle of people. Good or bad, it doesn't matter. And the idea is having this and putting this on the paper because I, I'm, I'm writing my book, so I'm quite near to completion. And a friend of mine say, uh, I have no clue what you're talking about. It sounds very smart. I say, oh, that's not a good answer. Absolutely, I can't handle this. Uh, and, but they say, okay, let's have a tool, a tool that coaches can work with. Uh, when, you have, when you're on a conversation with your customer, they say, oh, we want to go agile. They say, you can start with, and what kind of agile is your agile? Okay, that's the first step. But the second step is say, okay, if we are agile in your mind in, in a year, how does it look like? And, and where about who agile? Is the management agile? Are the teams agile? Are the operations agile? On what level of agility do you want? How is agile means for you? Meanings is, is that only methodology or is that something else? So things are bubbling up and also self, something you, you get out from experience and conversation with the customer. From a coaching perspective, if I'm using coaching words, the idea was to make a mirror to design, this is a situation, where do you want to go? So uh, as a conversation. Okay, so the big steps are looking like this. These are the eight first steps. <laughs> I'm really, really sorry. I will share, I will share you, with you afterwards the documentation and even the, the comments with it. So we have eight first step and we go dive in a little bit deeper and to understand why we have those steps. And you will see those steps are very tiny. They're not huge steps. The idea is something that everyone can do that you can see the result in, in, um, in your team. Meaning says, I'm, an, I'm just on the border of a lake the water is completely flat, flat and I'm just uh, throwing the first little stone to get the circles. That's the idea, is what step after step I can do to have then maybe, I can, at the end I can surf, I have huge waves right in my lake. That's the idea. So to have this, I have a couple of tools, how we can measure it. Because usually you have to have, measuring is not only KPIs has nothing to do with that, no OKRs at all, is um, a level of communication. As if you can't measure something, the risk is that maybe you're misunderstood or maybe people are not really listening to you. So here is really something quite tangible, let's say scientific, that everyone can measure, can test and say, maybe you have exactly the same result, the same outcome each time. Okay, so the main idea is here. We're starting from a situation that we call unknown. Even if your customers say, we are agile, to be honest, in my brain, they say, yes, you are agile, but I mean, I don't know. I have no clue where you are. So it's the unknown. And at the end is something that I will call an agile organization, which is a completely open model, and we can do a lot of things, uh, all the big ideas, happiness at work, flower power, big love, and whatever. But, uh, but this is something you have to learn. You have to 
learn to, to work with such things. And we have here steps to follow. What we learn is you have to remove the old ideas to, to create space for the new ideas. So usually when people, when you go in the old stuff, people say, oh, we are doing waterfall. And for those who don't understand what waterfall is, is, is a very structured mindset to prepare work, then analyze the work, then hand over to something else. And in fact, even, not, then, even though they're not doing waterfall at all, they're just doing something that I call whatever. So we have steps. So you have this cone of uncertainty going to, we want to reduce the risk of, to, we create discipline. And then we are open it. So you have this conversion diversion effect. So you have to converge first, then you can diverge in what we call agile. And these steps, so we're in the first con conversion, we say patterns precede data. And then second pattern diversion is what we call agile is data precede patterns. Uh, is that clear for everyone? Y'all tell me, uh, I have no clue, that's fine. Can be completely obscure for someone. Okay, next step. So to having this, to make it simple, I call it, I have names. So from step one to one, I call it agility. Agility is the beginning. Agility is where you make, um, I call it agile entertainment. You, you, you're coming as an agile coach, you're giving, you're making drawing, facilitation. So you're here, people say, oh, he's, he's nice, a nice boy. And you have no, not really big impact. You're doing a lot of stuff, but you, you are really feeling, ah, I'm not changing a lot. Or, may, or maybe you get the feeling, I'm changing a lot, but you're a little bit lying to yourself because you discover that most people, maybe you're helping one, two people, but at the end, you're not really doing this. So this is agility, that's the level zero, that's the ground floor. Then you have the level two is, I call it awaken. Awaken is, oh, there's something different. It's a structured, a disciplined approach of agility. Then you have Rubicon. Rubicon is, you're crossing the border. You say, okay, we have, the ending of the diversions, and I'm ready to go to the Agile world. Then you have a venture, which is Agile venture, then AO. This is just a naming convention. Because if you say I'm coming with 12 steps, people say, Ugh, I don't have the clue. But when I have a conversation with customers, okay, how far do you want to go in Agile? And usually say, we want to go to Rubicon, or we want to go, how a venture, a venture is when all the teams in the organization are working like an internal startup and the board of directors are like venture capitalists. So they manage funding. So each team is autonomous, completely empowered, and are able to measure the return of investment. But you have the board have a consolidated portfolio of activities and they measure investment, like investment. It's like a venture capital. So finance companies say, okay, this is where we want to go. We say, yes, okay, this will take maybe 10 years <laughs> because we have to pass through these phases to learn because you cannot open the gate and just jump in the water and you can't even swim. You have to learn to swim. So uh, most of my customer uh, have uh, reached Awaken, even SAP Awaken. Uh, it's naturally not forced, not forced at all. It's naturally. So even if you leave after two years, you go there, you can see, okay, they're not that level of awaken that they reached before. They, they reached before maybe a level four. Now they're more likely a level two, but they're still in that, which is okay. Which is okay. I worked for, uh, I had a, a startup in France, in Strasbourg. They reach uh, a venture in five days. Because you came here, Alsace is special, it's more like German. The guys, everybody, the boss was leader and everyone was leading. So when you gave the training, you always say, give me more, give me more, give me more. That will, everyone was aligned. So it was 
crazy. Five days, this level. And I still uh, work in that level. Much more complicated for the other companies. And in Switzerland, for a huge insurance company, in the conversation about the transformation of the company, say, our goal is to reach Rubicon. So, I mean, that's the level of agility we are, which is acceptable that we can reach. So, you will discover that from uh, agility to Rubicon, it's mostly operational agility at the bottom. And then the second phase is leadership agility. Any questions? Nope. You're also quiet and taking notes like very smart students. Huh. You will become chocolate after this. Some techniques that I use uh, to, to go to the switches, to switch from agility to awaken, I create waterfall. Very structured is, are you analyzing? You have the steps, the milestones, very defined milestones is, are you using a very, uh, very disciplined uh, project management technique like Prince2 or, yeah, Prince2. <laughs> uh, it's clear, you have milestones, you can adjust and you have the steps. And this, be you become rigorous in how you work. And having a, and using project management techniques and saying we have a project is helping you to define what a project is that you cannot name everything a project when it's not a project because a project has a funding and the project has a team and the team is dedicated to the project meaning you're not you cannot be a team member working different projects that's the discipline right then the phase two you have lean when you're cleaning all the waste and then you have the, the opening on Aja. This was just the introduction. Be ready for the terrific. Uh, other measures, I will measure the level of effectiveness. So this is coming from uh, President Kahneman, Jim Benson. So the level zero is you keep busy. You just, uh, you do what somebody told you what to do. Productivity is you do a lot of work, but is that the good work? Efficient, you do your work easily, but did it reach the maximum impact? And effectiveness, you do the right work at the right time, is the process repeatable? So when we say agile, or we can say just enough, just in time, means we want to reach effectiveness. Just enough, just in time. Or what GB Reinsberg said, Agile is not uh, fast, is uh, sooner. Okay, then you will discover afterwards a little bit more. So I'm um, going, yeah? One question, Pierre. Um, I've seen this discussion a little bit in a different context. And what I've been um, seeing more often is this effectiveness, efficiency, and then sustainability. So, you know, how well are you doing this? Was this just a one time you got it over the whatever threshold or are you set up in a way that you can actually repeat doing this in a sustainable way? Yes, um, yes, you, you have to repeat it in a sustainable way. But I didn't add too much metrics because I already have too much metrics. Sure. No, I mean, <laughs> it, mm, okay. Yeah, I but, but he is at least to be aligned with the wording in the naming convention that people say, oh, you have to be productive. You say, okay, you, you just want that people are keeping people busy and uh, you, you produce masses. Or we want to be effect, effective or efficient means, okay, like in Leanway, I'm just in a factory, I want to be efficient. But what we want to be effective is completely different, just enough, just in time is some graduation in the conversation that is quite helpful. Uh, your customer will be feeling bored, very annoyed when you, <laughs> you try to rephrase this, but it's helping to bring clarity. And sometimes I have the conversation, even though with the customer say, oh, it's different. Okay, fine, then you're speaking about the same thing. But you, now you will discover how I use it. So if I, when I go in a company, when I start a thing, I'm, I'm the stage zero. 
is by default all the situation. Then I need to understand how the thing is working. And how the thing is working, I have two things. I have my org organigram on the left hand, which is the organization matrix. So here is traditional, you say, okay, then you ask the question, hey guys, so you have a small game. So the small game is, who are you? Uh, write on the posse who you are, uh, put the posses on the wall and show me uh, your coworkers. So all the coworkers are bringing together the posse, that's our team. They say, okay, fine. So here you have a small red posset, write your name on the top and put this posset on who is your manager. The manager is the boss in your organization matrix. And then you ask a question, a small blue one is, when you have an issue, who are you asking for help? And this is from a sociologic point of view is what we call a leader. The leader is the helper, the rest, the, the manager is some, somebody else. So here we define, okay, here by default it's here, that's my matrix, uh, the, work, the, the workers are in this uh, blue green color on the top, I call it here operations. Uh, in red, I have the managers. I have in, uh, in dark blue, the customer. And we will have uh, in pink, which is not existing yet, uh, Scrum Masters and Product Owner. So is that's the strategy. I'm part of a, a line of business, which is this. That's by default. Fine. Um, um, Agile is the interaction of the agents in a system. Agents are people in the system. And the interaction between them is communication. Any, any kind of communication. And this is the matrix is called, is coming from Andre Robitaille, a French guy is measuring the level of communication and through the level of communication, you can understand how people, how the system is behaving. So you have one side you know, in the uh, one axis, you have level of collaboration. So you have from uh, low level of communication to very, very open level of communication and level of formalization to be very compliant and corporate communication from individualism to centralism. So let's say if I'm in a club, we call a club soil. A club is free communication, very high level of collaboration, very low level of formalization. Meaning we don't need to write down, we are very in a lot of collaboration. So by default, I will define here again, in red is my management, is very centralism. So they want to control the information. So you're not able to share anything outside of a company. You're not able to share anything outside, even in departments. You have this segregation between internal and external employees. So external employees are the freelancers. So in Germany, we have this law we are not allowed to. So it's very here regulation. And in light blue is we are the operation or more in the regulatory communication level means they're just doing what they're allowed to do. So very, very nice people. Another way around, this is my Kenevin model. Who doesn't know Kenevin? Shane? Okay, so I just see one screen. I can't see the second screen. Okay, I see Corrado. So maybe I have to, I will make a session just on this, on, on Kenevin. I'll just explain. Um, Kenevin is a model designed by uh, Dave Snowden. He's explaining how systems are behaving. Is uh, we know we have a, a complex a complex system. Uh, you have not a relation, no relation between cause and effect. Meaning everything is brand new. You don't know what is happening. So uh, one uh, presenter, uh, a, a woman in London, say you can test this with the frog experiment. You have a, you build a you create a frog. You kill the frog. The frog is dead. Meaning everything you do is unique. That's in in the complex system. Complex system means it's also where all the innovation is created, where you create a lot of value. But the complex system is something you cannot control. Complicated is a little bit different. Complicated is where you have best practices. Uh, you have, this is a gathering of experts, the people are speaking together, and they define the best practice. They're analyzing a lot of situation, 
and uh, we'll come up with uh, some idea. Uh, it's a little bit different than the Stacy matrix, but I will uh, I'll make it very short. It's take much more long to explain uh, because I don't want to spend too much time this. But what is interesting is in complicated, you have a conversation uh, with, uh, we are asking your opinion, but on the top you have the leader or maybe kind of project manager, which is the person consolidating all the information that you're sharing, meaning we are, we are, the conversation we have here is a complicated one. We are agreeing or not agreeing, we're analyzing a situation, but you're not engaged. I don't ask you to engage yourself to build something. It's a, a momentum where we can experiment things. And the outcome of this are best practices. Simple is a one-line direction uh, communication, is fire, get out, that's a simple reaction. Uh, you don't need to ask, the system is responding. You, heard, you hear the alarm, you get out. And chaos is nobody is connected together. So in disorder is here to explain that chaos is different than the, the disorder. I give an, ex, an example. Um, when you work from home, when you were working here in Agile Praxis, the idea of Agile Praxis is having interaction of people, sharing experience, because I do believe you have, we are all at the same level. So the idea of Praxis is having a momentum, a creative momentum every time, every day, based on the diversity of people we have here. So my idea is I want to have as much complex behavior as possible here, and we don't know what's happening out. But it will be awesome, right? But when something is ending, we can then say, what have you discovered during this hour, this and this? This behavior, we are switching to complicated, we are analyzing, they say, that's the lesson we learned. Okay? And I will stay here, <laughs> because this is usually takes two hours. And then we, we can do this session, I will have also maybe one or two other co uh, colleagues having a different angle uh, of, uh, Kinevan. So here, using Kinevan means in the stage zero, explaining that the all relation of the management are mostly complicated. They are discussing and analyzing out there. Uh, I will type the name into it, Shine. Is Kinevan, it's, it's, it's Welsh. So we should have a help from uh, uh, our Welsh colleague here. Okay, so see, so where are we? Okay, I will, I will give it later, sorry. Uh, Ken Evan. Okay. Ken Evan explained that here we have a relationship of management. Management is discussing together, they take decision, they're analyzing situation, define strategy, but the rest of the company doesn't know what's happening. You will discover something in the all hands meeting. So actually we are here in a situation where everything is, management is thinking about the strategy, about the process, about the business continuity, whatever. And the employees, they should work, they're waiting about something. They're not really linked to each other. They don't really know what to do. They're waiting that the boss tell us, tell them what to do. So the situation we have here, the people are decoupled to work together and they're not autonomous, they're quite alone and they're waiting that a, cus a, a bus telling them what to do. And here another will, so efficiency is our re return of investment of time to market. We are keeping in that, in that level, we are keeping work at busy and they are doing what someone told them what to do. The level of agility is exotic. So you will discover that people speak about agile or whatever and you say, what are you talking about? This is unclear, completely bizarre. Uh, new ever enterprise experience, meaning enterprise is what is the experience as being part of an enterprise is nothing, there is nothing. People are speaking about the image, the image, the branding of the company, which is not the enterprise experience. So branding is not only this. Organization experience is how the dynamics of the people are together, not existing. The service experience is also zero. People are doing things, not knowing why they're doing this, not knowing if they have customers buying this. We're just producing things. So without any thoughts, any ideas. 
customer experience is zero, meaning uh, customer that everybody, everyone believes that the customer will come alone to define how good the products are. So there is no collection. You all simply ask who is the customer? What is his name? Or we want to, to spend such thousand millions of dollars just in that program and you ask what's just one question, who is the customer? The customer is Luca and you say, Luca is the boss and the boss is not the customer. The boss is the sponsor. And you find this very, very often. And people experience is how people are working together. So here is emotion, intelligence, a lot of things. Okay, so that's the, so we didn't start analyzing anything here, right? Thank you, Andreas. Stage one, so I can do, I go faster. Is the default situation when the company is not yet known again, here's becoming a little bit more messy, right? So here the company hired project managers. So a project manager who's tried to be, okay, now you're a project manager, you have to manage this project for us, right? And then the project manager tried to, he's working as a backup uh, of a manager. He tried to contend everyone and he started his project, but the project he discovered in operations, he has to chase people. And the people are just working 5% of the time here, another percent of the time here. So the people in the, in the project, they are still in the hive, they are still in the matrix, that didn't left the matrix for the project. So you have somebody is floating like a satellite outside, trying to pick up a little bit dates, try to make some kind of magic to make things work. What is the relationship from the, with the, the, from the project manager with the customer in dark, dark blue? It's none. Uh, the project manager has to report to his superior, to his supervisor, who is working maybe for the consulting company, which is working for the sales department, and you have to go through the, so you have different layers uh, of people just to speak with the customer. Rings a bell, this kind of situation? Yes, but you cannot smile, right? <laughs> this is something that we discover a lot. So when you have such situation, maybe you can discover also like here, the same thing, the relationship, the conversation level at management is mostly complicated. So it's, you have most, a lot of experts speaking, but you have no agreement, no, not, no real alignment. And the people doing the operation, they just try to handle the work as usual. Communication level is here. You have here a, a third one because, so you have management, they love to partitioning. That's oh, I heard you pick Okay, that's Paul yelling. That's not good. Um, so management, they love to make segregation because you will start being cross, cross-functional. So you will have a fight between some managers. So they want to select the people, the resources or the people you're working with. Uh, again, the, the operation are still regulatory, they are in, just waiting, they are, don't know what is happening. And you have the new position in, in pink, which is my project manager, he tried to manage the situation. Again here, efficiency work are always like before, they are busy, no change after for them. Agility, nobody cares about agility, maybe you can do something. You make daily stand-ups in front of your computer, so people standing in front of the computers, which is great, I love this situation. No enterprise experience at all. It's very only the branding and the ego of the leaders. Organization experience, nothing is cryonism and flattery. Is you're working for egocentrics, narcissists, or maybe perverse narcissists. So, but you're going, so the, in the people there, the people the experience is more likely, I'm here in surviving mode, I need the job to get the money. And maybe you have to have two, three other jobs to feed the family. So you cannot give your full potential at this level. But we have to notice the situation. Before step two, any questions? Or you're not crying? Okay, terrific. Um, step two, a project. So we start to, to say here's more like we're starting to waking up. 
a little bit. You bring uh, project management practices. You say, I have a project, one project, one team. It's creating a buffer. And having a project in one team is makes, creates something like this. You have two systems, or maybe three systems are creating. The teams, the project team has become a system. Okay, you have at the head of the system, it's not perfect, you have a project manager, but already have a system. And this, my project manager is still working with his supervis supervisor, and you still have a system with the head of the company working directly with the customer. But you already started with the system. And you don't, so you have now stable resources, sorry, people, but you have stable budget. So you don't need to chase. You can say, okay, we have funding here. Here, also people always kept busy. Uh, we are starting to use some RJ techniques, but very lightly. This can be RJ entertainment, uh, no enterprise experience. We have a beginning of a team of a forming, so like Andreas love to do is the forming, norming, storming, is we, are, we have a team, which is not a virtual team, is a real team, you're working together. And the people experience is even weak, but uh, because people are still considered as commodities in the company, or you are, the management is handing over his activity, you have management thinking about what to do, and you're just here, you get the delegation from the management to execute some work which is not really empowering. Relationship here, quite similar as before. Communication level is slanting a little bit in something more uh, collaborative. That was a very small step. Okay, rings the bell too, you okay with this? Step number three is the beginning of proto agile. So we are going in the, let's say the first step, let's say awaken. It's, okay, now is me, uh, the first step in project management, okay, is okay, but we want having more, a bit more or something that matters. Here starting over, so we have here, you create a new role. You can call it the team lead, the scrum master, the coach or whatever. So you have somebody who is, who is caring about the team, who is caring about the organization model, and you still have your project manager. And this person caring about the team is helping the team to be more efficient, uh, uh, more self-organized, and you, you create a new dynamic, a completely new dynamic. The rest, nothing has changed, only you have one role more, which is, and the role of this model is also to sync his activity with the project manager, which is not part of a team. Project managers outside of the team. And the rest is the teamwork. The team is working together. Okay. Same thing, a little bit change. Productivity is rising. This is usually when you start over with very, very small art of technique. You say, oh, wow, bombing effect. You say, yeah, not that much. We just started. <laughs> and you can have much more. And the productivity is rising. Uh, Scrum Master helps the team to optimize their way of working. We are, we, we use agile techniques. Uh, organization experience is from the presence of the Scrum Master is getting a little bit better in a way we have a team. And the people experience is quite average because the team members try to interact with each other. So you have really, really, really a lot of conversation. So as I told you, it's boring, a lot of slides. Should I go faster or is it okay? Okay, so here you can see we, we moved. So management in pink here, always same level because we didn't touch it. It was schneller, okay, good. Okay, and here the other color is your team. The team is changing the behavior. They're going more in a complex. They're interacting together. So they start to pull the work. They're not asking for the work. They're proactive and not reactive because the Scrum Master is shielding, protecting the team from the outset. Level of communication has changed at team level because the team is working, they're using Slack or whatever. The communication is even, even though it's always planned, but much more, a lot more collaborative. Level four, we improve proto-agile. So we're still in awaken. 
Level four, you can see we get, we get rid of, of completely of the architecture. We are leaving the matrix. We have a system, we have a system, the team in the Scrum has uh, like before, I'm a project manager is allowed to work directly with the customer. So now we have a project working directly with the customer and no longer through some boundaries in the system with the organization. Maybe you have uh, meeting calls, uh, week, monthly calls about what is the situation, that's okay. But the team, the project manager is empowered to work directly with the customer. Revolution. Is that? That's basic Prince too. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay, thing thing here. Uh, you, uh, you you can read this here. This is more the topics, the average topics that I can discover. Also, increasing uh, productivity. The team deliver much more than often than the product ever wants. You have a new system creating even because the project manager is now working directly with the customer. He understands what a role of a product owner means because he now he owns the solution he's working on. He's not a relay for somebody else. We have huge improvements and small improvements and start a sense of belonging. So people who have this belonging about, um, uh, I'm part of this big team. So we lost mostly everyone. Well, so it will finish with a face-to-face -face meeting. Uh, same here, uh, communication level the same. Here, a little bit different, you can see uh, the we didn't touch uh, the orange circle, so it's management, doesn't move. Uh, middle management means here project manager and scrum master. They're more in the collaboration mode because now we have two roles. You have scrum master, which is also in the management situation, and you have a product owner working that way. Any questions? Not too boring? Okay. Super boring. Thank you. <laughs> uh, proto Scrum. So we already have Proto Kanban. Uh, now we have Proto Scrum. Proto Scrum is meaning I do I do Scrum by book by the book, or I doing Scrum like a process with knowing what is the impact of Scrum. So this is Proto Scrum, meaning okay, we still have the team, we still have a Scrum master. But now, uh, from the conversation with the customer, my product owner understands uh, that the customer, hey, who are your users, customer? Who will use the solution we're building for you or the book we're building for you? Who are the users? You have a panel of users. Say, so, oh, them, no. Then we have the, uh, so my product owner is helping my customer to create a system with his users. So like user experience, whatever. It's another step. Uh, again, things are changing. Productivity is still good. We still are very good. We replaced some kind of bottlenecks. Now we have three systems in place. Uh, we include users in the conversation. So, so, so it means that you can start to use user stories here because you know you have users. It means if you don't know users, why do you have user stories before? Communication cell still, the, st the team is still in the complex world. Communication level here, much better. Uh, a, a lot of communication. Should I go faster? Now we have the old Scrum. So old Scrum means Scrum for 12 years ago was the product owner wasn't part of the team. The product owner was the voice of the customer. So from a development perspective, at this moment in time, the product owner was nothing more than the business analyst, and which has completely changed uh, 10 years ago. Um, so my product owner start now to work. So you nothing changed at team level in the Scrum Master, you can see. Same thing, uh, but I have my product owner who is speaking very closely, working with his partner, the customer, and he is part of the same system with the users. So meaning I have my, my product owner is working out directly with the users and the, product and, and, the, and the customer to gather information. 
So here the role of my product owner is to understand the users and to transform their needs into a vision. Okay? It's so quiet here. It's frightening. Efficiency, the project is always moving better. Scope is reduced because when you in, involve the users and the, and, the, and the customer in the loop to build the scope, you will have less um, uh, compliance topics. You have uh, more uh, value creative uh, creation topics. So your scope has been reduced drastically because people say, this is what I want. Not that much, that's enough and that's okay. So you deliver much more what the customer needs and what he wants and you make your customer happy and he's happy to spend his money in your company. And because you make his, cus his um, customer users happy, everyone is happy, but not the management because they are losing power here. But the problem is you're decoupled from the main uh, matrix again. Same thing here. We are still keep an eye that we still keep the complex relationship. We have still a very good, not quite an opportunistic communication, meaning uh, even the, the people on the team are allowed to speak directly with the users, directly with the customer, which are not part of the company. Meaning they are able to share information, even sensitive information with someone which is outside of the company. So you, maybe you get here the, the trust relationship. So that's why we are not completely in a free communication. It's opportunistic. We share first with the customer and the user, and then we share with the main company. So the communication starts to be outside in first. Then we reach step seven. So now we are in, no longer in Awaken, we are already in Rubicon, it's Scrum. And Scrum is meaning this, meaning Scrum is different, we still have two systems, but my product owner is part of my development team. So my product owner has become no longer a manager, he is the team member in charge of the requirements or in charge with the aims or the demands of the users. His job is to understand the users and he's part of a team. So now we have two systems, not three systems, we have two systems. We have the team which is doing something that matters with a product owner which is part of a team which is also a bridge, a facilitator, the relationship between the users and the customers and the team. So usually when you train your coach product owners, your coach product owners to become coaches from the users and the customers. Then you have this relationship. So typically here in the story is, uh, you have the, the customer asking the product, hey, can you do this for me? I say, what do you want to do? I want to have a, a yellow duck. I say, okay, fine. Let's, let's go back again to, tomorrow with the team. So I want to have the full scope and maybe you can present what you want. So the next day you have a meeting with the team and the customer and the users say, oh, what do we want to I want to have a yellow duck or tell me more about the duck. And the team is asking also questions that try to understand. And they say, okay, and then at the end of the meeting say, okay, we do some here, we make some prototypes, whatever, a couple of ideas that we can show up next week with you. Um, let's have an appointment next week. Then the teams move out from the meeting room, go to coffee corner, and the producer asks them, hey guys, what have you understood? Is that really a yellow duck? Then you have the one, one girl say, no, no, he want a pink elephant. And I would say, no, he want a green parrot. Say, hmm, terrific. So let's make a prototype about a, a yellow duck, a, green, a pink elephant, and a green parrot. And let's see next week what's happening. So, uh, so my product owner is not a manager, is just a team member. He changed everything because everyone has his role to play. And the goal is that the team is in charge of, the team is accountable in, in good and bad. So even though you have the scrum master, the agile coach is also a team member, 
his job is to create the boundaries, keeping, managing the transformation, managing the change. He's also here to help the producer, maybe to facilitate the conversation, because if I'm coming as an agile coach with my producer, I'm making the facilitation, my producer is part of a system. He is keen to speak clearly with the customer. And maybe I understand different things. And afterwards, we have a full scope of what we need. It's helpful. So usually here is we create the family with mommy, daddy, and the kids, right? No reaction here? Okay. Yes? Yeah, um, this is Wolfgang. Uh, uh, Pierre, I think there is uh, maybe a topic for another session. Um, the whole notion of discovery, right? I mean, you described a very, how should I say, um, operational or tactical, right? This is specifically what this customer wants kind of uh, scenario. I'm thinking of SAP, other larger companies, where you have more, still more uh, uh, cooks in the kitchen to define or to discover what products should we even invest into, right? So then yeah. you will have to interact with other parties that are not strictly part of this schema that you just showed, right? Yeah. And I was wondering how that works. Um, how have you considered in this uh, the notion of, uh, I've seen at least patterns in many companies where you still would have product managers and product owners, how they work together, right? In some cases I've seen dysfunctions and other cases I've actually seen reasonable solutions for this, et cetera, et cetera, right? There, there's maybe more fodder to this. Yes, but in the meantime, you still have the same thing because I tested this in private banks, okay. in factories, in, with accountants, in most, a lot of with finance people mm -hmm. and with SAP the last four years. And, and, and which is crazy. So I really, so you have, you have to understand big companies, you have big, big levels of experts, you have very, very smart people. And very smart, every, everyone has the opinion. And, and then you have this German culture is, oh, what are you taking this decision? You're an alpha, which is your devil. And, and you have to speak out first. So you have to have the, this cult of compromise. Then you want to make the compromise, then the decision has been taken uh, on Sunday on the golf field, right? <laughs> and you, you don't know what is happening and everybody agrees, yeah, the boss tells is this is what you do. But that's is just human. It's because the system is so large, it doesn't work. And so the test experience that we uh, did with different departments with SAP is we create the same thing and it worked the same way. And it's, it's, it's not finger pointing, it's not telling you you're not right. No, you're right but maybe not yet. And it, maybe you're, what you're thinking, you're right, there is a risk. Is the risk manageable now or is that for the future? Oh, it's for next year. That is for next year. Mm -hmm. So you have to be creative here. Is, uh, usually it works well. So you have less and less layers at SAP mm -hmm. that, don't, that don't tell it like this, but you, you have less and less. <laughs> but you have a, a lot of other companies uh, it's terrific. So you have to be very, sim very, very simple. And, and the idea is if you bring it this step-by-step -step approach is very helpful because the idea yeah. is not to sell a methodology, is not get, get the training, apply the training and shut up, yeah. is okay, you can give the training, but you as a coach, what are the tools helping me to analyze the situation? Then I can create a conversation with the team and you can make with fun or whatever, but in fact, you always have this kind of report behind that you can say, and where do you want to go? Because if you just ask, I want to go agile and your agile is not defined, it's sorry, it's messy. Yep. It's messy, it's terrific. And you say, I want to stop to be agile. You say, okay, what kind of agile are you? So you stop something you never started. So it's, so it's helping to me very clear things mm -hmm. and to move away the idea of a methodology is we are looking how we work together. So here's the point is really looking how we are working together. Yeah. Uh, uh, maybe that, uh, very much to this point, uh, a comment you made earlier, it's about the communication. 
uh, a twist to this. It's actually the how the decision making happens. Who is involved in say easy decisions like when we have budget to spend and who is involved when we have budgets to cut the yeah. ugly discussions yeah and here comes it is quite telling yeah and and uh, it sounds weird maybe for most of you coaches but uh, to be honest money is the key factor in communication if you the good trick if you put money on the table say we want to go agile okay what is your budget I don't have budget, just be agile, be sure this is not serious. Uh, uh, because you want to, we want to measure a result. And agile is performance. The, the crazy thing with agile is you make people happy, <laughs> customer happy, people have fun, and you're hyper performant. That's insane, right? And, 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 but you have to be able to measure it to protect the teams, not with KPIs or, or, or management by objective. No, that's the situation. This is where we go. And you're creating the context where you are able to create such behavior. And here, typically, if you have here, uh, do you want to speak up, Rosa, Roxana? I saw your message. You're on mute, Roxana. Yeah. I was thinking about how the original question started about uh, what happens when you have, when you coexist like a product owner and a product manager, and you would think that product manager is like from before Agile or in a very low step in an Agile transformation. But I, I still think that in complex enough environment, you can have both of them in the team. It might be that one person cannot fully for the product owner role because uh, all the things in his job description i don't know the product is complex or it's one of those products that is serving other teams inside the organization and you don't have a real customer you have like a network of people and then i think that you can still call the organization agile and you can still have product owner and project product manager in the same thing but then their responsibilities are totally different I read something about accountability and ownership and how these two are different, um, but I'm not able to explain them right now. <laughs> no, no, that's, that's very good because you are honest because that's the, the idea of accountability. So we have this com also this uh, conference this week about requisite agility is about to define what the level of accountability in the system. That's a tricky, terrific point because this, you have the start of finger pointing. So if you want to be logic, if you have a self-organized team, means, and you want to have people completely empowered, means everyone is accountable. <laughs> I see so, that only in books. <laughs> yeah, but, I've but been here- I've a few companies and I've been in a few teams. And, yeah, uh, yes, because what is happening here, uh, you will discover in the next phases, uh, about I didn't touch management at all. And that's on purpose. So if you want to make a good transformation, start with operation. Start with the people. Uh, uh, if, because if you start deliver, if you're delivering, you have the freedom. Nobody care, right? You don't have, if the team is delivering something, even if the quality is bad, you become, you have freedom. As long as we make money, nobody will dare to disturb yeah. us. So the idea is deliver. Yeah. <laughs> deliver as soon as... Yes, yeah. and, and then we can use this trick uh, from the delivery to bring, to, to move forward, to create a dynamic that you always work this way and you create a safe zone. So here, um, responsibility, here we can see the system, the small boundary is... Uh, even though if you say in big debates, oh, my, my product owner is responsible for the return of investment and time to market. So people say, oh, I want to be the boss here. So I'm the product owner. I say, yes, but that's a complicated position uh, where you just gather here. If I go here back, hold on. I'm going here in this model, the Kinevin model. In every model, if my, if my product owner is the only one accountable and responsible, accountable, my product owner's position is a management position. He's only in complicated. He's measuring the outcome. He's saying, he, I'm validating here. Yes, yes, no. 
and, and, the, and the team is in a complex, in a complex world. But if you want, that's the specificity of a complex dynamic system is the system is working such as everyone is interacting. Maybe one day is a good day, the next day is a bad day. You don't care. It's the team is delivering things. Meaning, and this creates the freedom for you as a team member to not having all the, uh, let's say, everything on your shoulders, right? You have also the freedom to maybe to make bad things. So when I say, as an, when I come as an agile coach, I, I know how I look, I, I know how I speak, and I know what is the energy I give when I go in a room. So usually um, people say, oh, damn, the bus is coming. Then I make a bloody joke to make myself stupid. And this the information I give to the system, I'm not an authority here. I'm just a colleague, a team member. And me being a team member, part of the system and not an observer, people will be more, have the freedom to tell me the truth. I'm fair with them. We have a very honest relationship and maybe we can fix the real problems rapidly together. Because the, the, the things is, what are the different layers of accountability? That's just me, my career. So myself, very August Sankin, not the purpose. So again, if I'm coming here back here in this uh, level seven, the scrum thing, the good thing is we just need two roles. You don't need three roles. If you have a product manager, or maybe you can call it, you name it how you want but you have one, one is in charge and what to do. The second is in charge with the collaboration and alignment that everybody feels happy. Is mommy, daddy, and the kids. Daddy say, that's the direction, that's the discipline you have to tell. And mommy is, oh, here, milk and honey. Hey, baby, I protect you, I feed you, or whatever. The same model. That's a team. And a team, and everyone is accountable. And maybe in your team, you have the crazy uncle, maybe you have the crazy cousin, or maybe you're, you're the lazy brother. You don't care. It's the dynamic of the team. All right, Roxana. Okay, so again here, I'll let you read this, but you can see here, okay, with the level of Scrum, when your Scrum is running well, meaning here, you will discover that in the Scrum, that even though at, at the beginning you say, okay, we have management roles, but but Okay. Then when the Scrum is working, really working, you have people working, you don't care being a Scrum Master or something. It's not necessary. It it's becomes meaningless. But you cannot force to say, oh, it's meaningless to doing this. No, that's lazy. It's because you know what to do and because you learned how to work it, it becomes naturally, as emerging behavior, meaningless. And, and that's a learning factor. So again here, and you can see here, the relationship are a little bit different. So you can see, so everything you start, a project start is simple and obvious, meaning everyone knows what to do. Then you go in chaos meetings and you what during five or 10 minutes is, and you what is your single opinion about, what is your small Lego brick, personal Lego brick you can bring this, this big idea we want to achieve together doing 10 minutes, and then you say, bring your Lego bricks and let's build all together something with all your Lego bricks. And you build this during the whole sprint or whole iteration. And at the end of the sprint, you say, okay, now let's make a stop. Let's have a feedback. Everyone in complicated. Let's, gather, let's check the situation. You take your role. You're, you're going more in the analyze thing. You show and tell. One guy said, that's good. That's a lesson learned. Retrospective, fine, 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 fine. And you document it. And again, I see what is the next step. Next step is simple. Again, and you come on, you, come, you start again, 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 this way. So if you have a scrum, so if you have scrum players here, so if you have a sprint, a sprint, the whole sprint should be in a complex dynamic. So what is happening when you have an expert coming or manager and disturbing the team? The manager will pull the team in a complicated model, even putting, putting the team members in the old behaviors into the chaos, meaning as a scrum master and a coach, you have to relaunch everything. 
after the game. You have to restart again. But that's part of the training, sir. Okay, here again, here, I'm moving far. So this is a very solo performance. This is terrific. <laughs> so here again, what? Yeah, what you think about uh, making a break after the 48 and go on in the next round? Look at the time. Yes, uh, yes, I would suggest here, step eight, we are close to the end. Let's make a break. What do you think? Let's vote a break, five minutes. I was more thinking to the, the, call it a day. What? Calling it a day. I think for today. I think you're going. <laughs> oh, you want to leave today? Okay, that's fine. So, so uh, then I go faster. Then I go faster. So we are done. We're nearly done. Because afterward is the same logic. Because then you have to go. What, what time is it? It's seven, we start at six, and we have 30 minutes left. Come on, Andreas. It's tomorrow, your session. Okay, you're right, <laughs> you're right, until eight, uh, my fault, go on. No, it's very fast. I want, uh, I see you just maybe, a lot of people just cut the video, I guess they're watching Netflix, and they're just staying in the conversation just to be nice with me. You don't need to be nice with me. Uh, nice is my last name, that's enough. Then you can say here, step eight, we are going agile. Going agile means even the boundaries, the boundaries with the customer don't, doesn't exist any longer. Uh, I'll give you here an example, at SAP, which is incredible, to be honest, headquarter. So we had the daily, daily meetings, the daily, daily scrums, having managers, customers in the meeting. The meeting is led by the team. So nobody's allowed <laughs> to, to give orders to the team. <laughs> but in the team, you have a one team member say, she was in Bucharest, say, oh, this is nearly done. I hand over this to uh, Lucilla to, to review the customer. And, and then I'm waiting here uh, of her feedback. And after they say, hey, this is Lucilla. It's okay for me, that's done, done in the day. So having the conversation in the day because we, the system evolved to that kind of relationship. It's based on respect. It's not a forced respect, it's an obvious respect. And is in this, okay, you can't do this when you have 10, 15 people in the meeting in 15 minutes, but it's largely done in 30 minutes. And every day. And you can even have information about the system, how it behaves, right? Again, here, I don't read this documentation. I will give you the slides afterwards. And then feel free to give me comments. I really, really appreciate feedbacks, even from Henning. I'm sure he will give you feedbacks here. And here, again, how we can use, this is how I track. So usually I have a couple of borders. Uh, boards to say, okay, where are we? And the combination of all these borders give me the real patch picture of where I am in the situation. You can see here, because the team is working closely with the customer, uh, the, the level of transparency has moved very, very far away directly to the customer. So with, with Henning, we work on a program for customer, so you have to think in that particular moment in time. When you're working for, when you have on-site customers in the program, you have to define directly this uh, strategy to have it as soon as possible in, in the conversation. So now step nine is the switch. Now we're speaking about the management very rapidly. So my management, so now I have my team is working with the customer and the user uh, uh, completely decoupled from the management. The management will start to push hardly. Is it, oh, that's our customer. We want to have a voice. You're working for us. So you have this small game. But it's a it's kids game, right? But uh, then question. you have, what? Question. Uh, yeah. Are you going direction of um, scaling now? Yep. Go ahead. <laughs> but you will discover that scaling doesn't matter any longer in this way. 
because here you have management and we have my management team has become a team, an agile team doing management. The purpose of that agile team is helping the agile team working. So meaning, so we have impediments or blockers, or usually we have uh, funding, we have funding issues, we have risk issues, maybe our compliance issues that we are quite in the way of the, the teams to, to produce the value. And here is, as a agile coach, a scrum master, I discover what you call impediment. So we have weekly impediment bashing sessions, meaning we gather together with the agile team of management to uh, uh, discuss about the, the, the issues at the team level. And maybe they discover, okay, that problem is outside of the team, you can solve it, but it's ours, it becomes a risk. And that risk is managed by the management team. And this is how the management is helping the, the main team. And even though the management will handle all the budgeting in that phase. All right? So we still have, then my management team is moving more in the chaos, so a little bit split it, they have to learn it. Uh, communication is still the same. Next level, the hack. The hack means even though the management team uh, will leave, <laughs> will leave the matrix, the organization matrix. It means, okay, maybe officially I'm a line manager, maybe officially I'm a senior vice president innovation, but what I'm doing, I'm the product owner of a development team doing the new stuff. So you will have maybe a head, which is the, the official branding, but in reality, I have another role. And that's okay. So here you have more, more likely, what, this is what we already started. How, I'm no longer with SAP since, over, since January, but um, this is what I started doing. Meaning you have uh, the line manager have become one product owner, very high level product owners in charge of a product, a different kind of product, which may be a larger a program. And you have others have become people managers, and make like a large agile coach. So in, that's the trend I discovered also in big, big, big companies in Germany. They naturally splitting the roles, getting away from the traditional line of managers. So it's going this way. And here is the idea is, even though I'm a line manager, I have, I have maybe, uh, I will be in charge with, the, with a, a, an internal startup like an investor. So I can keep my position in the company and maybe have the board of directors giving a budget to work on a solution, creating a new value for the company. So you will have internal startups. And if you ask a, a, a manager, what do you really want to do? No one tell you I want to keep being manager. So if you want to do something that matters for you and for the company, and I give you money and you keep your responsibility and maybe your salary, are you happy? Give me this, give me this, I will do it now. And I will do it now. Okay, uh, cheers, Anna, good day. So here, so that's the idea. We are splitting up is meaning we are reconfiguring the whole company as a bundle of startups. So that's the next, and the next level will be more terrific, which is the level 11, the agile organization. Here is just systems, and you have only, only startups, only agile teams, and here the model, what you can see in the central point is, it's the board of directors managing like a uh, venture capitalist, meaning they're managing, they're consolidating the values of each teams about time to market, return of investment, the funding, or even they can sell internal startups. So, um, Pierre, yep. how close is that to holacracy? Mm. On purpose, not close at all. Yeah, I made you think, thank you. Uh, it be, because the idea is the less roles as possible. We always okay. have, and the less, uh, keeping things simple. So even, even though if you are scaling, if you have, let's say a large, a very, very large company with a lot of project, whatever, uh, 
you have just projects or programs and programs are collection of projects and the, the product owner of a program has not the same goal than the, than the project manager. Let's, as an example, you have a Porsche Cayenne. That's the Porsche SUV, right? And this car is quite easy. So you have maybe the product owner Porsche Cayenne. But in the product owner Porsche Cayenne, you have the product owner body colors. You have a product owner interior seats. Then you have the product owner uh, engines, like hybrid, electro, or diesel, or petrol. And then you have the product owner for whatever fashion things. So it's a collection of different product owners, even in cars, and everything that you do is even when you have airplanes, you don't have one guy in charge with everything. It's a bundle of people joining together because the oh, idea, what? Fine, but uh, you said they are more venture capital board. So what kind of budget would they give to a whole product or only to a team uh, led by a product owner? So, no, so it's more likely a team. So usually when you do this is like a startup, you have to pitch it. Mm -hmm. So, which is not some present, I'll give you an example, is you have to pitch it. So the idea was if you, you have an idea, we have no clue if it's worth it. So you have to sell your idea first in the company. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you have to pitch it in the company, then you have to propose it. And if you can make a meeting and you can, and you gather maybe seven people as a team, you get budget. Okay. <laughs> you get budget for a swarm, uh, let's say a budget for three months, and you make a proof of concept. Okay. And it's, or maybe it's a smaller. And, and this kind of behavior you have a lot in, 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 in very uh, modern companies. In research and development, you have this kind of doing things a lot. But the thing is, people are not doing it internally. They're losing a lot of money doing merge and acquisition, which is I'm by uh, as a company, I will I want to buy a startup. And here's doing the other way around is create your own competition, create your own innovation. So you have permanent innovation in the company, and you may be able to sell it, to sell this uh, small part, or not, or buy a new one. And when you're selling, it's not because you decide. It's everyone is okay to leave because it makes no sense at all. Any questions? So now you, you will have two tons of things to read about this. Question. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, when we talk about the different product owners of the car or airplane or whatnot, yeah. how, you know, how do you envision that they are together collaborating on that bigger thing? Does that fit in the model that you have shown? Are they the management portion in there? Um, yes, it is. It is more likely in the book that I will share with you next week. I will share the raw material of the book so you are able to challenge it. So that book has previously been the first part of Enterprise Scrum that I was writing with Mike Bill. And this will be the call AO. The idea here is uh, it's called Hoshin Kanri. Hoshin Kanri is coming from KZN. Uh, when Toyota has started to, to, to create the, the Lexus companies, so it was 20 years ago, more than this. So they started one year to investigate it, to understand the market, the preparing everything. And they started what we call the A3 model. A3 model is uh, well known as a template, it's a canvas when you have business model with um, force weaknesses, uh, you have uh, so a pure SWOT, you have an Ishikawa model, and you design what you want to do. And A3 was the maximum, the biggest size you can put in the Telefax at this moment in time, was my generation, right? So you can share. And the idea is you design your strategy, you share to you, uh, um, not the subordinates, to the dependency, to the other teams. They are in full, uh, uh, something we call a catch ball that challenge your business model and they send it to you back. And if you have 20 level of dependency, they have to create their own catch ball at each level. Meaning, I come with my main idea, and maybe you can, okay, you can make a dichotomy of that idea to create your own idea, and maybe you have even dependency with other teams. Say, hey guys, this is what I want to work with. 
and you can share about. It sounds weird, but usually I do this in a workshop. We have everyone in a workshop. When you have 200 people, the first time I did this in five days, again, SAP, then it, it works in four hours or even in one day. And the idea is, where do we want to go in the next three months? That's the strategy. What is my decomposition strategy? Then you put uh, 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 on the board in front of everyone, this is our vision of a strategy. Everyone can challenge a strategy. Then we refine and refine to get all together together. And at the end, do we have dependencies? Yes and no. Okay, dependency all fixed for the next quarter. Uh, let's go that line. Uh, who wants to work where? And then you, you're measuring also the engagement. So as a coach, I really can see if I can do this, there's a huge level of trust in the team at each level. Uh, we are sharing the same ideals uh, and people are willing to, to get engaged. And, and another trick that I don't mention here is uh, when I do this like global, uh, global finance strategy with SAP was also last year, we defined this two days, two days playing with Legos. <laughs> that was the strategy is the facilitation process is a creative process because analyzing they are very good into it, right? So you're speaking with people very smart. It's like a coder. You don't teach him to code. He knows how to code. <laughs> teach him something he needs, something else. So I had a conversation even yesterday or two days ago with Elsa, I said, we need to have more creativity because that's really, really the solution is think different. And that's the strategy. Then you have the strategy at the team, at the, uh, here in management level has the strategy and the team has to define the tactics. Tactics are what you need to, be, to do to transform that strategy in something valuable. That people know what to do, but if you have somebody who has no strategy just to decompose the work, I'll do this, and you don't have an impact. It's not possible. I have a question. Go ahead. Um, this was a lot of input, huh? So, um, again, <laughs> that's me. Again, yeah. <laughs> so, um, when you step back, you had this, um, the, the model of the cone of uncertainty showing the converging and the diverging. Yeah. If you project that on your process, can you, mm -hmm. in a very simple way, um, explain what is the convergence part and what is the divergence part? And then also, how do you, as a coach, that's the second question, bring in, like, what do you do to foster this increase of innovation mentality somehow and well, that's a good thing happen. like to get from i mean like yeah from the it, simple small you know granular to the big thinking yeah oh that's that's a weird picture i'll show you you can see my screen with the ao measures uh, yeah. I, I would try to make it bigger because it's weird, yeah, here. So here are something like this, and this is something I discovered when, when I, in a conversation with a customer in, in, a, in a workshop, we, we discover, okay, what are we speaking about? So I, I use something six pigs, SX, uh, OX, and EX, meaning customer experience, service experience, people experience, organization experience, and enterprise experience. And it sound in the conversation, it rang a bell to everyone. Say, yes. So the idea is we, hung, we want to have the full scope and mostly swarms here, what to do, what we need to do. So we have full measures of what it, what it means. So when you go in analyzing here in metrics, in, in going to the switch is fear. Awaken means most of our activity have a customer, a known customer. So most of the project have, can name the customer. Even internal, we can name it. It's not something that somebody give me to do. Uh, people experience means we have teams working together as a team. 
service experience means that everything we done we have done one time we can we have documented it and we can reproduce it like engine like refactoring of processes so you can create a catalog meaning customer experience i create a unique solution maybe i do something unique for wolfgang then it works for wolfgang then i document this for wolfgang and i give it back to my boss and they say and this is oh this is very interesting we can reproduce uh, reproduces maybe Ulysses is interested in maybe Hen Henning too we put this in our catalog and say hey Henning hey Ulysses you have something that you hear that's a small bit of work but service experience is something interesting but it doesn't bring too much value that we have this custom experience so we can have to switch and now I'm giving giving you again more information <laughs> I, 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 have, I have one question. Um, uh, you, you, you say we, we start in a bureaucratic platform and, and we, are, we are measuring customer experience, people experience are so low, but they, they, they should be doing something well because they have a share. So what, what are the things that are doing well and they, they, they start to improve because looks like this bureaucratic platform uh, seems like uh, is doing nothing well. I don't know. Just, just is this comes to my mind. And other other thing is, um, I I like the idea of that 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 you are doing like this maturity model in organizations. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, what about the roles? Because uh, what are the difference of of these roles than than the ones that are in the market? Because uh, how 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 in this model this role will will help to 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 convert into support uh, management from support. How is this related with, with this with these roles to 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 this? Okay, so it's so this is mostly designed for agile coaches. Yeah. So this is the core practice of uh, my agile coaching certification program that I'm running since over three years. Really, I'm diving deeper and deeper and deeper. And now I discover I train managers, I train change managers in big companies to become agile coaches. And even though, so you can say, I, I do believe that agile coaching is the new management. And, and, and we, we need, I needed a tool to explain this. Because if you don't have the tool or you're just here, King's fool, oh, let's do thing, make, make your agile magic, fix our solution. And it's a nightmare. It doesn't work, Chris. Or you're too, you're just coaching teams. Then you're like, you're more like a rabbi coming to listen to people and what are you doing and blah, blah, blah. It's, it's nice, but it doesn't bring value. And the point was also coming from agile coaches in my team say, hey, Pierre, what are our value here? because we are asking the whole company to be engaged. And this guy asked me, and, and, and what is your mission here? You ask us to be engaged, but you're not engaged. <laughs> so, and that's a fair point. We are engaged in the change. So say Najako is leading and guiding the change. These are the tools that we use to, to guide the change. So, um, Pierre? May I add or, or uh, continue on this? So a couple of things. I, I like the uh, this um, guidance, so to speak, right? That this could mm -hmm. be, I could consider this like a, a, a handrail, so to speak, yeah. right through this process. Um, there's one thing though, I struggle a bit with this bureaucratic platform in the same space as agility. I would suggest to reconsider the wording there. I do think the bureaucratic platform is probably, in my experience, where really most of the companies start. So I don't see really a problem there. I yeah. think you could run into confusion um, with this, right, with the label agility on top of it. Yes and no. <laughs> but okay. that's a very good question. 
because I, it's it's on purpose. Yes, yeah, Roxana. Plus one. I, I want to plus one on that one because agility has become kind of a very well known, widespread term. Yeah. Um, and it can, might conflict with people's understanding. Um, yes. I, I really like the term agile entertainment that you used. Yes. I yes. think that one was perfect, but agility was right I also don't. Yes. Yeah. But, yeah. but I think and, I yes. think that was meant as a, a wish of the customer where where he liked to have agility. But uh, Pierre explained that he knows not really what uh, to achieve by agility. Well, Volker, I think you think I'm, I'm, a, I'm a very too nice person. I'm a, I'm a big bastard here. And this is on purpose uh, uh, because I do believe agility is just for dogs and horses. Exactly. Where <laughs> I was coming from, it's a, it's a dog sport. Yes. Uh, and, yeah. and, and yes, it's the meaning behind it's not the wrong place, it's on purpose, uh, is um, if I don't have the word agility that everyone is able to use, and that's okay, that's not, uh, I'm not judging here, is a situation. It's a good, bad, I cannot judge, is a situation, but it's about defining what is agile and what is agility, and both are not the same thing. That was how I tried also to define what is agile. So it's not, it's a low, uh, high capital agile, which never is a system of people interacting together in a complex way. That is what I call agile. Uh, and, and not a low capital just means swift. It was at the beginning of agile, agile was it is. Then you have business agility, personal agility, whatever agility. You say, okay, I got you, but I cannot mix Agility in what we try to, to, to create with Agile is different. So he is not about, so when you say with dogs and horses, okay, it's not really nice, but it's okay, you want to call it, call it Agility, but not Agile is different. Yeah. Because we have yeah. to sort it. Sorry, yeah? Another question. Is there a purpose behind using 120? on the first three uh, scales and not 100 like on the other two scales? I don't get you here. Uh, Look on the scales below on your measures. You have the scales of 120, 120, 120, and then... No, 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 here's no purpose. It's just a design. That's okay. it. It's just, it's just to... These, Confuse. Mm, yes, no, no, take you on the scale of 100. It's just kidding 100. It's just here the design, the design way. Is in the conversation meetings, okay, how can we measure that we reach that step, whatever, on a high level is. Then we, we know if we reach one, if we go in the Rubicon, which is the big switch, which was the earliest question of Elsa, about the corner of uncertainty, at which moment are we reaching out from the diversion to the, uh, from the conversion to the diversion, is when we reached the level when you reach, we are starting over organization experience. Mm -hmm. We have, we are thinking, and service experience and customer experience are completely related to service design, completely on it. So that's why I say, when I say we need it, is we need it. We need it. When we were work together with Henning until April, uh, people are starting thinking about all the details and the business process, whatever, instead of taking, and, and when you start analyzing, you're starting analyzing until the end of the universe. You want to have all details, mm -hmm. but you have to say, somebody has to tell you, stop. Mm -hmm. That's largely enough. Mm -hmm. And having this creativity part into it is quite helpful to be more, let's say, more constructive, mm -hmm. more positive. Mm -hmm. Is it more positive to say, okay, yes, okay, it was a bit too much, right? Yeah, okay. On, on, on that very um, uh, thought, with this uh, positivity, um, maybe one twist to add or to consider um, mm -hmm. when you discussed um, what uh, what's your agile or what's uh, where do you want to be, right? Um, I think uh, in in my uh, observations with with companies struggling with this, it helps to really discuss very early on why. You know, you, you ask the question, what budget do you have? Even mm -hmm. before that. Why do you even care? Why do you ask us to help you 
become agile? Is yeah. it because your golf partner told you agile is a cool thing? Or you've picked up Harvard Business Review uh, last month or no, something? Because I need the money. So I say, oh, that's right. a good idea. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> However, you know, having a, a, a real candid discussion about that, probably yeah. rather sooner it's, than later is better. You're absolutely right. And that's not candid at all. Uh, and and I, I'm following your idea. I'm going to say, um, we're all online here. So usually yep. people say, we want to make agile transformation. You say, okay, got you. No, but agile... The only people who care about Agile are the Scrum Master and Agile Coach. The rest of the company should not care about Agile at all, right? Right. Uh, what is the problem we try to solve? Yeah. Yes, that's Pierre, exactly right. Yeah, yes. Pierre, can I also add, I'm yeah, hearing please. a total partnership with human resources because I find human resources is the bottleneck mm -hmm. that's not going to allow you move into a swarming structure. They have to put and, names and, and, to jobs. Yeah. And, and, and if it's not, uh, sorry to jump in, and if it's not the, the uh, HR, the human resource, it is finance. So I would say both of those, you have to somehow bring around or at least enough uh, thought leaders in those areas. You have to bring around and help you shape this and get this uh, hooked. Otherwise, you're in trouble. Yeah, but uh, I would say the problem is always the others. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, well, make them part of it. Make yeah, them sure. part of it. But, that's the point. Yeah, but one trick is how we start is you start where you are. Oh, it's absolutely. How, yep. So if you start as I need to have everyone involved, uh, then you have some weird conversation that I have in, 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 in Switzerland after two meetings, one in Zurich, one in Geneva, when you say, oh, Pierre, you know, 99% of the leaders are okay to get you, but... We can't make it. See, ninety-nine person, you're okay, but you want to have the agreement of everyone. You cover your ass. Come on, and if you make a change, you say, guys, I'm very fair with you. Change is not a nice situation. Change is terrific. Change creates a lot of fear. Uh, nobody is happy for change. Uh, no, is and, and you have to say. And when you start changing here, usually what I say when I use this, say, oh, that's cool. What does it mean your, your model is? You see, from one step to another means this is what you want to know to, to do. And the second question is, what do you want to stop doing? Mm -hmm. yep. Because sometimes you add things. We are adding Agile into something weird. Mm -hmm. But the question is, what do you want to stop doing? And here comes the big. I, yeah, I, I would like an, another comment. I don't know if it is dummy comment. Uh, I, I understand that swarms are like how how you will adapt to change. Uh, I would like to know like what because companies need to have like a centralization at the decentralization strategy because you, you are starting to build another organization uh, parallel to to this bureaucratic. So so what 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 you should centralize and what you should decentralize. Think. Yeah, good question. Um, you should, what everything you can centralize is usually business as usual activities. In these business as usual activities, you can, you have tools that can do this. There are all these routine activities, you can, you, you have tools and they are not really expensive. So you can uh, unleash creativity in people at any level, even in finance. You can have this. This is this can you can save the world through this unleashing the creativity existing in the company, and all these central company. You have a tool. You have a tool like Jira, even a Trello, or even a board. If you make everything transparent, you're clear to say, "Hey guys, that's the situation, and this is where you stop doing. This is where we start doing. And this is the decision we can make it." So you can ask Henning. We did this with post-its in a big room. He changed everything on the project. And you put it transparent and then you ask even the manager, hey guys, the guys are waiting since four, day, four weeks to get the feedback. Are you able today to give a feedback? Is Oh, not? Okay, then sorry, I threw it away. This makes, it's not important. Oh, it's important. So what? Then, then and it's not, it's making transparent. It's, we are all, we are all caring. But having a central regulation, which is just here to measure 
having a business intelligence behind uh, people are working I want to have this new color on my board does it make sense no the sense of we have a problem to solve we have to be faster we have to think digital even though it's what's happening now in that moment in in, in the opening of market is we say okay now Germany is everything's quite normal average but in fact not because now we are in the in the poker game is okay, we have budget, but we don't want to spend the money. And the first we want to spend money, this he will the failure means all the externals, the freelancers are still looking for a job. Mm. And nobody is taking decisions. So you have always the same demands, always the same things, no very good feedback you don't know because no one is able to take a decision. They're all locked in. So you have to design. So my, my idea was let's design uh, an, an organization, a model, how, how we work, giving you the freedom to experiment things, good or bad. And the problem is not stocking. So what is here, here confinement here, the locked in is you stop working even at the company and you believe that everything is running well, it's wrong. If you stop moving, you're dying. You will see companies that were closing in two or three months, even if after COVID, because they're not able to relaunch, to reboard people after this event, because they're not able. They try to address it like before, like you want to analyze the process, you want to analyze everything up front, we want to uh, ask for funding, then we have asked for procurement to, to get the cost. Then I want to uh, have very low wage people, and I will ask India, and the people in India, the company broke down, they were bankrupt. You will have a lot of companies that are getting bankrupt. Then maybe as they wake up and say, oh damn, you're losing your customer. Yes, nobody waited. And we are in a terrific situation. But you have to design a context that able to improve. But you have always companies, I know also companies in Germany, they never stopped. They never stopped working. They did a little bit less, but just to be sure that they keep the relationship moving up front, even with the with the customers, with the partners, and with their uh, employees. Okay. That's it. Okay. Again, too much. Nothing oh. else. Oh, that's good. So, Virginia, yeah. you are a former student. Yes. Is that helpful about, about everything we've done together, like design agile organization, the, mm -hmm. the certification trainings? Yeah, incredible. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's it, it's perfect, and it's for me. It's also fun to look back where I worked in swarming organization. Yeah. Which is crazy because it was a bank <laughs> in the 1990s, hmm. where they used they, they used the concept, and it was the motivation was amazing, the productivity was incredible, adaptability was in, was incredible. You can may also link with with sports, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yes, you have, when you say team, I have in my mind team like in sports. Mm -hmm. So you're playing basket, I was playing volleyball. So uh, it's like this, it's the same, you have the same logic. It is working everywhere, as simple as possible. So you, Henning, you survived three months with me. Um, rings the bell, what I show you here, and with the experience you had with me. You're on mute. I'm sorry, yeah. it's it's not MS Teams. So, there's echo. So yeah, bells rings was uh, yeah, kind of a hard time uh, in this organization with you and the changes we want to prevent. Um, this time not a full success because they cut us. But if we gave us if they gave us time, yeah, we could do it on a way like this. Yeah, it was not not methodological at all. Yeah. Um, so the, the the fix. So we we so we worked with the implementation of the SAP program, which has been stopped due to funding reasons. <laughs> And, and, and Henning was my help. He was, uh, let's say, 
some kind of scrum master was very helpful. So, uh, but this is exactly what you're doing. The idea is we had, I will share this with you and maybe I will start, stop bothering you. So we, we lost the half of the people. <laughs> Which is I have to run it now hurts. as well. Sorry. Okay. Okay. See you around. So feel free then to, to give feedback afterwards when one is over. So I will stop the recording now. I will stop sharing. So that's.